and welcome to this London Embroidery School Stitch Along. I am your host for today, Natasha, and today I'm going to be working on our mini star Christmas kit, uh, which you may well have seen on our website, or you may have managed to join us for our last Stitch Along, where we worked on its uh, sister product, the Snowflake Christmas Decoration Kit. So, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're starting to get into the mood for Christmas and starting to feel festive. I think this product will definitely help you along the way if you haven't uh, already started to get those feels. So, I'm just breaking into the kit itself. I have, of course, already started my stitching. This design is features uh, two techniques for gold work, which is the pearl pearl edge as well as the bright check cut work, both of which I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of today. So um, because of that, I have already started and have mounted it onto the base fabric and you get base fabric in the kit itself, along with the front patch, the back patch, which looks like this and actually comes with sticky layer sorry about the crunching um so this is our sticky layer we'll come to that in a little bit you also get your pack of bullion pearls you get your needle on a little um piece of fabric there you get your ribbon with which to hang the piece at the end and in addition to that you're going to need um a hoop in which to frame it up. You're also probably going to want a couple of pins for when you're mounting your piece. Uh, you are going to want a pair of snips that you're happy to uh, cut your bullion with. Now I would suggest that this is a separate pair of snips from your regular thread snips uh, because the cutting of the metal will blunt the blade. So I like to have two pairs on the go but it's up to you uh, what you want to use. You may also like to have a laying tool. Now this is an optional extra, but this is a laying tool called a Malore, which is for gold work specifically. If you want to find out more about that, we do have a pro tip just on Malores themselves, as well as other laying tools such as stilettos. You pick your own player. You might also like, therefore, to have a bullion board, which looks a little bit like so. It's just a, a velvet covered board and that stops your pearls from jumping around. But if you are using this kit as uh, you know, a first foray into gold work, to so just sort of try it out and see how you get along with it, then that is totally fine. You probably wouldn't have a laying tool or a velvet board and you can easily do without them for your first try. It's only if you find that you've fallen in love with gold work, which I, I'm gonna guess that you will. But you know, I'll leave you to find that out for yourselves. The journey is part of the enjoyment. Um, then you might want to invest in those as you go along. They're not particularly expensive, to be honest. I think the, uh, I want to say the Malors are less than seven pounds and velvet boards are less than 15, I want to say. So, you know, they're not particularly expensive items uh, if you do happen to fall in love with gold work, uh, as I say about investing in them. Finally, if you are anything like me, you might also like to wear a thimble whilst you're stitching. But that, again, absolutely optional, my personal preference, uh, so I wear one. So with my stitching, you can see that I've put in the pearl pearl edge first. Now that the whole of the outside edge went down first, and then I've just got uh, the internal sort of struts of the star to put in, these two short ones left to do. To apply the pearl pearl, we simply couch it down into place. Now, pearl pearl is a very interesting goldwork material. It's quite a hard wire, and it uh, is like all of the goldwork pearls. It is wrapped around a tube, so it is in itself a tube. I don't know if you can see down the hole there. Can you just about see that? Yeah. And uh, that means that you can then cut it to length. It is wound very tightly, and so when we use Pearl Pearl, we have to sort of stretch it slightly. So you want to just catch it by the end, and you literally just very gently pull on it. And all you're looking to do is, because it's a great big spring, if you like, just open up the gaps ever so slightly between the Pearl Pearl uh, turns, so that you can 
open up enough space to drop the thread down into place in between the turns without you seeing it. And that's how we've done it here. So each stitch just literally goes up over the purl purl and drops back down the other side. And then we pop it into place. Did you hear that little pop? That just holds the purl purl into place. And I'm just securing the absolute end of this piece of purl purl going very gently trying not to upset the other purl purls I've already got in place and that then just fully secures this here this is where you might like to come in with a laying tool and we can just sort of shape the purl purl as we need it so if you get any little sort of bows in your purl purl, you can just very gently and smoothly, more importantly, push them into shape rather than doing it with your nail um, or a pin or a needle or anything like that. And then bending or obscuring your already laid pearls, you want to do it uh, with a laying tool. Uh, because it allows you to either get into the narrow pointed bits with the narrow end or use the nice smooth curve of the far end. As I say, if you want to find out more information um, on those laying tools, do have a little look at uh, our pro tips playlist as that will help you along to make your decisions on that front. So as we start a new piece of purl purl, the final strut that I need to put into the star. We first want to make a loop right up towards the end and place the end of the purl purl into that loop, tightening it just to catch the very far end turn of the purl purl into that corner. Then we can come a few millimeters down and start making our couching stitches. And can you just hear each time you very gently just want to lay the thread over the top of the purl purl and then have it drop down in between the turns of the purl purl itself so that it disappears. I don't think I mentioned that the kit includes the thread that you want to work with as well, which is a light grey so that it's nice and subtle against the uh, silver purl. And that is included in the kit. It's the same as the one I'm working with today. And then when you come toward the end of a section where you need to finish off, you just need to have a look at where you want it to end. Then you cut your purl purl. And come back in to secure it into place. So as I mentioned, if this is your first sort of foray into gold work, it's a really lovely little project to use as a first foray as, uh, you know, it's not too pricey a project and it's nice and festive and, you know, sort of feels appropriate to the time uh, that we're working in. But it um, will show you step by step on the little notes that are in with the kit how to do your stitching, as well as obviously you can come back and use this video to help you along if you want any pointers. So I'm just going to finish off this thread and start a fresh one. Here's the thread from the kit. Um, taking a fingertip to elbow length piece of thread, as that's nice and controllable to work with. When you're working with gold work, do be prepared to thread your needle and unthread your needle many, many times. So try and work with a needle that you are comfortable with. So we can now move on to the cut work elements of this mini star. I'm just going to anchor the thread into a section which we're going to cover in our cut work. As you can see, I've already got one section complete down the bottom here if you want to see what it's going to look like. So now we need to bring over the other type of metal from the kit, which is going to be the sort of glittery one. So I've still got a little bit of spare pearl pearl here. We can put that away. Let's 
take one of these. So like with the Pearl Pearl, you need to just lay it into the section which you want to fill. And effectively, you sort of just have to make an educated guess about how long you want it to be. Particularly when you're starting with cut work, it is a bit of guesswork. You are a bit limited by a lack of experience with this. And you basically, yeah, just need to lay it into place a little bit like so. And then where you think it needs to end, snip. It is also a bit of a strange technique because basically what we do is we lay it, we make a guess, we lay it into place. If we like it, we take it out and we cut another piece of the same length. Then we put the piece back in again so that we get a master copy of that length. If we don't like it, we change it, we try again, and we take it off. So there's a lot of back and forth, hence why I say, you know, we end up threading and unthreading our needle quite a lot. So now that looks really, at the moment, like a really good length for there. It looks like it will sit very flush to um, the position it needs to be in. So I'm just going to drop the needle down. Okay, so that's sitting really flat to the area. So I'm going to unthread the needle, take my laying tool and lift it back out again. And then bring back over my bright check and cut another piece of the same length. I'm gonna leave over here. Then we can re-thread the needle and lay it back into place. Okay, so we go about a bright check width up I'm going to put this to one side for safekeeping. We take our bright check again, lay it next to the piece that we have already done. It can be a little bit wiggly, it wants to move around, so you've got to be a bit patient with it, trying to find the right position. maybe about there. Right, let's see what that looks like. So again, we take our piece of pearl. Thread it onto the needle and place it down onto the fabric. Okay, that looks good, so we take it out. We cut another piece of the same length. If you get a loose end like that, can you see that against my finger? It gets like a hook on the end where we basically damage it whilst we cut it. You've got to get rid of that. That's going to be no good for you. So we come back in. Cut to the same length. Let's try and keep that one as another master copy. Rethread our needle. And place this piece of bullion down. If you need some tips on how to thread up your needle, now I know that sounds like 
it's the most basic thing in the world. And it is, of course, when it comes to embroidery. But uh, you, if it's something that you have trouble with, we have a pro tip that has four different ways to thread up the needle, which you might find useful. If it's something that you find difficult, perhaps we can suggest a different method of threading up the needle. And yes, there are many different ways to thread up a needle uh, that might suit you better that might, you know, make the process that little bit easier and then you kind of can relax into it and enjoy it that little bit more. Because I personally think that these projects are wonderful as a little sort of festive project for over the Christmas period. Obviously, they're lovely to gift as well, but it might be a little on the late side. I'm sure you guys are all organised with your gifts uh, for this year. However, yeah, they make a really nice little just first try into gold work. All right, taking this one off. Let's cut another one. This one, as I say, is the uh, sort of sister project to the snowflake that I did in the last stitch along that we shared together. We've been really overwhelmed with how many of these little kits you guys have purchased and want to give it a try. So, uh, yeah, we're hoping that next year is going to be the ultimate year for gold workers, as we have so many new gold workers coming to the fold. And if you do find that you fall in love with it, uh, we do have further gold work projects for you to challenge yourself on. So we do have an introduction to gold work, which is a uh, cherry design. And we have our gold work online course, which is four classes. Um, it goes into a whole host of different techniques for you to try out on this little pear design. Very cute. Um, and that has been super popular. Or you could step it up to one of our intermediate classes once you've had a go at some of the beginners classes. So we have a very in-depth look at gold work from a more creative contemporary aspect, which makes a jungle design. Or we have our online class only uh, gold work lettering classes. There are three of those. And for that, uh, that's great for using up any spare gold work materials you might be left with after previous projects does what it says on the tin. It teaches you about using gold work for lettering outcomes specifically. Okay, now can you see that one looks a little bit short? So I'm going to take that out. Cut a slightly longer one and place that back in and we'll test against that one. Ooh, got away from me there. Do you see how um, I always think that cut work is kind of, it's quite a humbling embroidery technique because you basically sort of have to lay yourself out ready to be patient because you're going to be going one step forward, one step back, one step forward. Oh no, that's wrong. Two steps back. Okay, let's try again. One step forward. So... I see now that looks ever so slightly too long and it's sort of bowing upwards. So again, out it comes. Now, once you've done this once, because we're taking master copies of our preferred lengths when we find them, it should be faster to fill the other sections because we've already got the master copies which we can cut from. I don't expect that they're all going to be exactly the same and sit absolutely perfectly every time. We may still have to make some small adjustments, but it means that we're at least starting the other sections from a place of knowledge from what we have discovered from doing our first section. Now, much better. So out it comes again, let's take a master. was wrong. Let's get that out of the way so we don't get confused. So as I mentioned, I have uh, done a stitch along of 
this type of kit before in the form of the snowflake kit that you see here. And in that one, this we completed within an hour. The whole, from start to finish, the mounting of it, the finishing of it, making it into a decoration and all the stitching. So, you know, very achievable in an afternoon. This one here, I've been working on prior to the stitch long for about an hour laying the pearl pearl, but it does include two techniques. So that sort of makes sense that this one takes that little bit longer. And cut work is challenging as a technique, but that doesn't mean it's not really good fun and really satisfying when it sits beautifully as well. Because of that, as I mentioned, if you want to have a look at how we did the mounting, do go and check out the uh, Instagram live from the snowflake as that will show you how I did that. Although I did do it in an ever so slightly different way to the one I'm working on today. And that's because this one, we uh, literally just stitched it directly onto the backing fabric. And then when we had finished the embroidery, we cut around the back of the embroidery, which was smaller than the patch itself. And because the back of the embroidery patch has, well, the back patch for the embroidery, so uh, this half, has the sticky on the back. It just finishes all of your embroidery in one smooth stick, which is very convenient. So it means that you don't have to worry about what the back of your embroidery looks like. For the mini star, as an alternative, I have actually window mounted um, this piece. So using actually the space that was left, the hole in the fabric that was left by creating this one here, I'm now stitching into a hole, which is why um, you can probably just about see my finger in underneath there. It, this is just sort of floating in the hole that was left in the fabric. If you want more details on window mounting, do have a look at our pro tips. We have one specifically on window mounting as well. There's lots of useful stuff over there. If you're a bit stuck, I feel like we are likely to have something to help you. So I'm just gonna have a quick sip of tea. See, I've got one of those little hooks again there. Let's get rid of that. And make a copy. Okay. Whoop. Right, let's put our copy over here. Thread up the needle again. So, if you have any questions on what I'm working on here today or anything you think that I might be able to help you with um, whilst you have me live, please do pop your comments in the comments box. Um, I will be reading them out as I go along and I will check in a second that we haven't had any already. If I miss your comment because I'm stitching, um, my apologies and do feel free to direct message us afterwards um, and I will be looking through those and answering them if there's anything that comes to you that you feel like you need to know more. I will be looking through those. Equally, if you missed the start of this and you are wanting to watch it all, um, then I would say that we will be sharing this on Reels uh, in a little while. And I will be making a full length version um, of all of the stitching that I've done today. So the preparation beforehand, as well as the stitch along itself which will go on to our YouTube channel in due course. Now, this is the first time that I've had the chance to sort of just sit down and do some gold work stitching since we developed the intermediate gold work jungle class, because that did kind of take over my life for a little while. It was quite, it is a very in-depth class, but um, I'm sure if you have a little look at the photos. It really is quite beautiful. Um, it makes a really interesting piece at the end. So if you are feeling inspired by that, then this is definitely a great place to start 
for um, where you might like to begin your gold work journey. Have you already got a sort of festive leave project in mind? Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be something like this, but I've got mine in mind already. Um, I happen to be getting married next year and I am making an awful lot of uh, flowers, silk flowers for my wedding. So that is kind of like taking over all of my spare time is uh, in flower making. And the flowers which I am making are actually the ones from our painted organdy posy class. They're all my favourites, which is why they ended up being developed into that class. Um, all sort of wildflowers. So there's poppies and sweet peas, cornflowers and pansies. That's the last one. It eluded me for a second there. Did you hear that? Okay, so that's a good size piece. Let's take a duplicate. So yeah, that's what I intend to be doing with my time off. As always, stitching. <laughs> but have you already got something in mind for what you want to achieve? I appreciate for quite a few of you, it might be, you know, a rare opportunity to have some time to just, you know, make something that you'd really like to make. So if you are planning something, I'd love to know, uh, just because I'm, I'm terribly nosy about these things. It's always nice to hear what you guys are up to. And of course, you can share your makes with us. If they are a London Embroidery School project, please do think about tagging us on Instagram. Uh, we are at London M School or on Facebook, we are London Embroidery School. We love to see what you're making. We love to see how you get on with your kits or materials um, and what they went on to become, what you felt inspired to make. If you do share your photos, you will automatically be entered into our Student of the Month competition, which gives you the opportunity to win a 10% off voucher once a month and we share the winners on the first of the following month and yeah you can use that voucher on anything on our website so you know particularly if you're planning on taking one of the longer courses it, it's really worth popping a little photo up and tagging us in it because you know you may well save yourself a few pretty pennies now, as we get towards the end of this cutwork section, I am elongating my stitches ever so slightly just to taper it slightly towards the point. And we basically, for the end one, we just want the tiniest little dot of a piece of bright check. Barely more than a turn. Because like the Pearl Pearl, the Bright Check is made by winding the wire, it's a softer wire for the Bright Check, around a cylinder to make it into a tube that you then cut to shape. And there we go, that's one section filled. Uh, but they do this, the tube is not, in fact, sorry, the cylinder is actually not um, cylindrical, it's kind of more of a a triangle shape um, when they wind it, which is what gives it its uh, more glittery effect because they've got the, sh the straight sides that are constantly changing and catching the light. So now we're on to this next section. We can come in with a duplicate from our master and see how that sits into place. That one looks a little bit short, so let's take that out. Let's try and cut ourselves a slightly longer one and try again. Mm -hmm. And 
another little festive project that has been very popular this year has been our Atria Day Advent Calendar Bauble PDF design. Now that's a really great one if you haven't made up your mind on what you want to do. Now, sorry, do you see that one? That one's way too long now. So let's take that out and try again. I went too far the other way. Um, yes, Advent Calendar Bauble. Obviously, Advent has begun, but... Uh, plenty of people have still been buying that um, design because it's just a PDF and we advise you on what sort of materials to use, um, what you can choose from your own supplies and really basic, easy to access ways of transferring your design onto your fabric. The design which we obviously provide for you that makes it into a physical 3D bauble in the end. So this is what our one looks like. And, you know, you could do just a tree a day, as we originally suggested, or you can do like so many other people and just treat it as a lovely little Christmassy type project, pop a hanger onto it, get it onto your tree when it's done. I mean, beautiful. They're, all, all the trees are different. So if you're a real beginner to this, and this is looking a little bit uh, beyond your current capabilities, you know, let us start you off with a really friendly little project and talk you through, you know, the absolute basics um, are included in that PDF. I think it's 14 pages worth of um, materials and information for you to take on, which, you know, covers things like how to start and stop your thread if you are an absolute beginner. But equally, you could just... Enjoy the design and freestyle it your own way if you are more advanced than that. But looking to just, you know, have some fun stitching and do some stitching that doesn't require too much thinking. Because that is the only thing about gold work. Of the, you know, hand embroidery techniques, it's not the most relaxing one. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. It is terribly satisfying. Um, it is very beautiful at the end. I think it looks really luxurious um, because it is. But it is not the most relaxing of the techniques. So if you want a challenge, it's absolutely up there and perfect for that. So each time I'm just taking the master that we took from before so that's what I have over here on my board and I'm just cutting a new piece that I think is about the same length as the master and then applying that to the section we're working on to see if it fits nicely. Does this sound like it would be up your street? Is it the sort of thing you can see yourself doing? Or is it the sort of thing you'd like to give someone? Our postage that is due to arrive in the UK before Christmas has unfortunately already passed. But if you are doing some, you know, later meetups with family, then you may still be able to get um, gifts from us for them in time. Equally, we do have quite a few digital products like the um, Christmas bauble that I mentioned that obviously don't require postage. And so that wouldn't hold you back if you wanted to send them a PDF as their gift. Or we, of course, do gift certificates and you can help yourself to those. We haven't, however, done our last postage of the year. Um, that is due to arrive after Christmas, but we are currently still taking orders that will be shipped out before Christmas, even if they won't arrive before Christmas to the UK. So um, do get your orders in. Last orders for that will be tomorrow, as they will be leaving us physically on Wednesday. So yeah, anything in tomorrow should still be shipped out this year we then close 
as you know um for our christmas break on thursday so after that kind of our uh help team and email answering all that sort of thing uh will be on pause until we come back from the christmas break on the 4th However, there'll still be plenty of new content going up on social media and whatnot. And as I say, there's lots of good support content on our YouTube channel, if you want to check that out, as well as the reels of stitch alongs and so on, um, like this one here. So if you find yourself a little bit stuck, do have a little look at those. Because we will be back before you know it for next year and we've got some really fun things planned for next year's classes we've got plenty of ideas of things that we want to develop to bring to you and we're just trying to you know get some of those finished off so they're ready to bring to you early next year so i hope you are looking forward to those and if you have any ideas about anything that uh, you would like to see from us that you don't think we are currently kind of doing, but we should be doing, or that you're interested to learn, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. The school only exists because of um, you guys asking for things, basically. So if there's something you want to learn and you think we might be able to help you with, let us know. So many of our classes have come from suggestions of things that people wanted to learn in stitch alongs actually um our beaded coral class came because somebody said they wanted to do some beading techniques that weren't timbre and so we developed a class that included uh 21 non-timbre bead techniques you know we decided to go the whole hog um as they say and yeah our intermediate um gold work jungle class again sort of came off the back of people wanting something a little bit more contemporary a bit more um modern feeling but with those kind of traditional materials but used in a really interesting way and so some of the techniques in that class are not particularly traditional in themselves but they still create some really interesting and beautiful effects and at the end of the day i think that's what's important Because we just want to make beautiful things, really. There is great joy in that, in my opinion. Although I appreciate I am terribly biased on that front. Uh, given what I do and what I'm passionate about. Also, if you'd like to see more from me. Um, if you're enjoying me just, you know, waffling on about embroidery. Then I do also have a YouTube channel called Taking Time with Tasha. And uh, you'll find more stitching content over there from me working on various projects now i have been a bit quiet over there of recent because as i say i have been uh, preparing quite a few bits for my wedding and making flowers lots and lots of flowers um so yes i've been a little bit quiet on the video front but there are quite a few videos over there some of which are gold worky as well so you know there might be something for you might find interesting so I think I need another little bit go into here it's quite tricky when you start to get into the smaller sections oh my lights just given up the ghost sorry about that one second small technical issue guess it's the nature of being live is it not anything can happen and probably will put a different light on might need to change the angle ever so slightly terribly sorry there we go can you still just about see we've got some stronger shadows that's a bit of a shame never mind hopefully you guys can still see the important bits
what are your plans for this Christmas? Aside from stitching. I'm not always asking about stitching, I promise. I can think about other things. And in real life, I am able to hold conversations that are about things other than stitching. You probably won't believe me on that front. Um, because over here, see, it is all I can talk about. And it, quite rightly, it is a lot of what I talk about. Um, it's fun, and I'm not sorry about that in the slightest. But, um, you know, are you seeing family? Are you going to be with friends? Um, what is your idea for a wonderful Christmas this coming Christmas? I've been really excited for Christmas this year. I don't know why. I feel like this year is like the year. Don't ask me why. But that's just what I feel like. I think maybe because I've been working towards creating so many of these lovely uh, Christmas products for quite a lot of the year. There's been a lot of talk about it. And we at the school have been very excited to release all of the new products that we have had for this year. So I think I've just been ready for it. I should say this particular design was in fact uh, dreamt up by one of my colleagues and designed by one of my colleagues, not by myself. So no credit for me on that front. Um, but I think, you know, it's just such a beautiful one. And it seems like it's gone down so well with you guys, which is just lovely to see. Okay, so ready to move on to another section. Again, starting down the bottom, I'm just going to check how... Do we think that looks a little bit short? What do we think? is a bit of trial and error. And I think the more that you do of these pieces in gold work, the more that you're able to sort of see if it's right or not. But even when you're experienced, expect to take some pieces out, you know? You're always going to be humbled by cut work. Okay, I think that's the one. Let's give it a go. Oh, I had said to myself I was going to check the comments at the end of that section. So I'm going to do that now, just very quickly. Terribly sorry. Sometimes it gets a bit jiggity. Thank you to Fran67000 for your comment and $2. Much appreciated. Lovely to have so many of you having joined me during this session. As I say, if you have joined now partway through and want to see from the beginning, it will be on reels afterwards. So don't worry you're not missing out too much. Now, as you can probably tell, I'm not going to fully get to the end of this design whilst we are live, but I will have it finished and have all the bits put together into a full video, which will be up on YouTube, hopefully by the end of the week. Fingers crossed. Try not to hold me to that, but that's what I'm aiming for. I've got an awful lot to fit in this week. It's always the way, isn't it, when you've got Christmas break, as much as I look forward to having, you know, a little bit of time off work and all that sort of thing, as I'm sure we all do, um, there's always just so much to get ready. And I often overpromise myself um, two jobs. So, because I'm still desperately trying to get some bits finished for next year's products. They are very, very exciting. Chilled exciting, though. So, sort of, you know, like, easing into things. I don't want to say too much, but I, I really think you guys are going to like them. Um, there we go. That's a much better length. Let's get that one in there. Okay, better. You do have to try not to upset your existing 
pieces of pearl as you place the new ones in. It's very easy to, you know, come up and poke them. And if you do bend any of your pearls, it can be very tricky. If you're lucky, you might be able to smooth it back out, but sometimes it means actually you need to remove that piece of cut work and replace it. Once a piece of pearl is damaged, it kind of can't be undamaged. Which is all part of why gold work is so luxurious, I think, and so um, fascinating. I think it's the right word. It's simply just because it's quite unforgiving. You know, it was, it is metal that you are applying to the fabric. And it therefore obviously can't be washed. So when it's used for garments, it has to be done so with great care and consideration. Which is why originally it was, you know, reserved for royalty and, you know, pageantry. For ceremonial pieces. And is still used in that way today. Very interesting. I love the sense of history that comes with it. Even when you're doing something quite contemporary, you know, not um, historically motivated design-wise at all, but just because gold work comes, you know, pre-impregnated with that history just because of what it is. It makes it all the more fascinating. We usually, with our cut work, keep them in sections where they are laid down at kind of a 45 degree angle. That's always flattering for stitching. Um, and that is obviously, it lends itself very well to that with this design because of the spokes of the star already being in there and then you just match to your first spoke. If you're not keen on cut work, but you like the star design, there is absolutely no reason you couldn't um, use chipping to fill the design instead. So just cutting small pieces of different lengths like we did on the snowflake over here and laying them in, at, in as many different angles as you possibly can to fill the, uh, the shapes of the star. And then we would consider that chipping, not cut work. And the smaller the pieces are really, the better on that front. But yeah, if you're more a silver person than a gold person and you wanna try this out, but you don't think you're quite ready for cut work, why not just pop in the pearl pearl edge, which I think is a very, very achievable technique, um, even for beginners to gold work and then chip it instead. You'll have plenty of materials. As you can see, look, I've got loads left in my bag yet. And I'm over halfway. I've only got two more sections to fill in this way to get towards a finished star, like this one here. Um, and I'm still on my first actual piece of bright check. So perhaps if you do find that this is your new passion, you could use some of those excess materials into, I don't know, the uh, gold work letters class or something like that for the future. Okay, that's another section complete. I think I'm going to give myself a new piece of thread. And so just up into the gaps between some of the pieces of Bright Check, I'm going to do my stab stitches, which is how we finish off our threads with gold work. So that's three, little stitches almost on top of one another pretty much on the spot just to finish off the thread go very carefully so you don't damage any of your cut work and come in with your scissors and cut really close pulling that thread nice and tight so that the little end pings back in basically and disappears 
and nobody's any the wiser on how the metal pieces got there. So I'm going to finish my last two sections in exactly the same fashion and once I've come to the end there then all we will do is we will take the back of our embroidery which has got the London Embroidery School on it and we will peel off the sticky which goes a little bit like this there we go you see that there so it's really nice and sticky. You're going to release your embroidery from your hoop, cut away as much of the backing as you can, remove any tacking stitches that you've got, stick the back onto the back of the front and then thread your ribbon through and your piece is ready to pop straight onto your tree. So that's all from me for today. Thank you so much for joining me for this little stitch along. It is going to be probably well it is going to be the last one for this year so might I just take this opportunity to thank all of you um, who continue to inspire and support the London Embroidery School with your ideas and your business both are equally important to us so thank you once again you, we only exist because of you guys and uh, it is our absolute privilege have a lovely Christmas and we'll see you in the new year so uh, stay safe Keep making beautiful things. Bye for now.